we've really been channeling our Christian I, audience lately. I know. I, <laughs> I'm sure they, they probably missed that part of the Bible, too. They probably missed that <laughs> verse. That was in We're happy we're here to help you with your Bible studies. That was in Alcoholics um, chapter 24, verse 3. You're welcome. Did I tell them this is a homemade sorbet mimosa, but it's really a homemade sherbet mimosa? Are we ready? I already had it. Oh, dear God. <sighs> hey, hot boys and hot girls. I'm Melissa. And I'm Matt, and we would like to give you a warm welcome to Hot Girl Kitchen this fabulous morning. Welcome back. And, you know, you've already made our egg. Um, I we should have come up with a name for that, too, while we were at it. Um, our, our latest breakfast creation. <laughs> breakfast. Um, it's kind of like a deconstructed quiche. Maybe we can call it that. Um, you've already made that this morning, and now you're like, mm. Like, I can't go on without God, a cocktail. God forbid you don't use alcohol when your brunch plans. I mean, that's, I think that's one of the Ten Commandments. It's one of the deadly sins. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not consume alcohol Thou shalt not not consume alcohol at brunch. God will strike you right down. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I mean... So, Matthew, what alcohol will we be indulging today? Well, we will be indulging ourselves with some berry cream mimosas. Um, so this is something that my mom made the last time I was at home, and we had, a, we had people over for brunch. And I was like, ooh, damn, that's good. Like, what did you do? And so we're, I'm making a little um, take on what she did. And I've actually had before, like, a sorbet mimosa. Have you had that before? Yeah. And it's almost kind of like a homemade sorbet mimosa. Like, you're making your own sorbet, mm -hmm. which is, like, so cool. And it's, like, a nice little... So cool. It really <laughs> is. I mean, who do you know that's done that? Not a damn person. Certainly not their fave. Your fave has done nothing. And you know what your fave also hasn't done? Oh, wait, let me guess. Um, is it subscribe? She has not. And, you mm. know, it's kind of rude because all we're doing is giving your fave help to better herself. And you would think that she would want the help. So maybe you should well, recommend. Well, she, she wants the help, but she watches from a distance and doesn't subscribe because she's a hater. She's hater. She's, she's hater. a hater. She's hater. She's hatering. Hating. Oh my god. What the hell? Oh my god. Not hatering. me saying hell right after quoting the, the verse of the Bible. So what ingredients do we need for our berry mimosa? Creamy berry mimosa. Mm -hmm, creamy. So I know that that kind of the description was a little bit maybe intimidating when I was like it's almost like a homemade sherbet sorbet experience. Do you know the difference between sherbet and sorbet? The main difference between, and that's this is even in bold, this is in bold characters. The main difference between sorbet and sherbet comes down to the amount of dairy each contains. Sherbet, why is it spelled like that? That looks like a typo. Sherbet. Sherbet contains a small amount of cream or milk. Whereas sorbet, oh my god, wait, so I did say the wrong thing, didn't I? Sorbet contains no dairy at all. So this is a sherbet. I'm so embarrassed. Look at me spewing lies with my platform, Hot Girl Kitchen. Imagine So we're that. giving you a homemade, homemade sherbet. Homemade sherbet mimosa. So anyways, all you need, it's very easy, are, what well, is, some frozen fruit. Um, my mom made just raspberry, but I was like, Let's spice it up a little bit. You know what I'm Let's saying? Get wild. So I got a medley. We love a little mix experience. So this is strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. So we still got the raspberry in there, but you know we're gonna blend it up. We're gonna a get little, wild. Yeah, get wild. Um, so you need that. You need some sugar, um, and then heavy whipping cream. And this is all you're gonna need to make your sherbet. And then um, obviously some champagne. -a. We clearly have our cute little mini moes. Cheers to that. Um, although, if I was making this like in real life for a Less gathering, people. a large gathering, I honestly, you could use, what's your fave? Andre. 
I haven't had an entree in years, but yeah. That used to be your thing. I well, every in college, every pregame, what I drank a bottle of entree. It was like clockwork, every single one. Which and I, I wasn't even there because I'm about seven years younger than her. Um, she, isn't she aging so gracefully? Um, but I are I knew that. About isn't her. it isn't it wild though to think about the fact that I was drinking a bottle of cheap garbage champagne every time I went out to drink. And then I, who knows what I was drinking at the bars, I'm sure, Jack and Coke, something gross. Like, and I woke up spry, ready. That is wild. Like, no, that part's now, wild. The part where you were drinking something cheap and gross, that was absolutely believable. I only drink tequila now. I used to drink whiskey. It's gross to me. But anyways. But most people like tequila. But the point of her drinking something cheap and gross, not that surprising. We've all been to college. Well, not all of us. Um, but those of us in college, or those of you that didn't go to college, but were just college aged, you know, going out drinking, you love we've all been it. there. Yeah. Where we, we would just grab a, that's what you did. It was so much easier than taking shots. It was the right amount of drunk. So, like, well, I didn't know anything about being the right amount of drunk. Still don't. <laughs> <laughs> One day you'll learn it. Yeah, Maybe. someday. <laughs> years and years in your future, probably. <laughs> Maybe by the time I'm your age. Yeah. I mean, we hope that you'll stop. Yeah. So maybe when I'm 35 or 36. I'm 27 in case anyone was wondering. Um, but anyways, you I would. Drink the a whole point of the story oh, okay. is you can use like a cheap bottle of champagne because you're mixing it. The champagne's not the star. The star is your homemade sherbet. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are just having our little mini moes because or we're bougie prosecco. and we're yeah prosecco is that would be my preference is Prosecco if you're like making it for a group of people um but you know anything cheap works we're drinking mini moes because we're bougie we're fabulous we're gorgeous your favorite we're sponsored yeah no, I'm just kidding <laughs> you wish that's all you need oh, well okay. and you'll need some champagne flutes obviously um to serve a champagne cocktail and anything other than a champagne flute to me is a, is a felony like, or a coupe. You could do a coupe. You, you could do a, a champagne coupe. But I'm very much so giving Dorit Kemsley from the Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills her feud with Teddy Mellencamp when Teddy served her a champagne in a wine glass. That That's me. I'd be like, ugh, what are you doing? Why do you disgrace me like that? So, a champagne appropriate glass <laughs> is a must. My mom actually bought, like, Cute, um, they looked like cut crystal ones, but they were plastic from, I'm not going to say where, because again, we are giving too much free sponsorship mm -hmm. away here. But since we're going with the, like, you know, if you're making it for a large group of people, great idea, fabulous idea. It looks cute in pictures. You can throw them out after you're done. Mm -hmm. Not a damn thing to wash because I'll tell you what, to hand wash these, these are real you can, as you can see, it's not the best, um, Melissa's job that she's done here. I'm so embarrassed. I almost forgot one of our important ingredients. Not really, but um, since I'm making this in real time for you, um, and it needs to freeze, I've got this cute little um, ice cube tray, and look how skinny it is. <laughs> um, and I think this should be no time to get our s*** in. Don't forget to bleep that. Um, but if you don't have something like this, just like put it in a, a bowl container. And put it in there. Yeah, that's and then you fine. can just use it, an ice cream scooper and. Correct. So we will see you over on the stove top. At that, on that note. Ooh, at that note. Ugh. Um. So what we're going to do, as you can see, we've moved along to the stove top, is pour out our frozen berries onto this stove into our pan um, on high heat and just kind of melt these down um, until they start to get a little bit like an oh my god dear god look at the mess we're making um, until they're a little bit thawed out so like I'd say a few minutes it's not going to take too long on medium heat on the stove but we just want to start to get them a little bit malleable before we throw our sugar in and start to kind of, what's the word I would use for that, like, not caramelize, 
Is it caramelized when I said? No. You know what I'm saying? What's the word? So as you can see, we are starting to emit some fabulous juices from our fruit, which um, signifies that it's getting defrosted. It's starting to like get a little simmery and you can just kind of um, lightly tap on the fruit to see that it's getting soft. So it is in fact defrosted. So what we're going to do is add about a quarter, oh my God, I lied, a half a cup of sugar. I'm gonna do a little bit less because I don't wanna have like a headache later. Um, it's really to taste, you can do more or less, whichever you prefer. I'm, I would say that's about a third. a third. Yeah, let's go with like, let's say a third of a cup of sugar. So we're going to add the sugar and stir it all around and get our fruit nice and combined. And we're going to keep doing this until the sugar is completely dissolved, which as you can see is happening pretty quickly. And then um, in the meantime, I'm going to have our crew get out a... Um, I guess we have a Nutribullet here, but you could use like a blender or a food processor for the next step. So we'll have that ready and we will see you there. As you can see, our sugar has been completely dissolved. Those little granules you see in there are actually the seeds from our fruit. And our camera crew was so kind to get out the Nutribullet for me. So now what I'm gonna do is add our mixture, um, which, I did Google and it's a compote um, when you mix like sugar and berries on the stove. And um, anyways, if you would crush these up a little bit, you could actually like use this on brie. So if you're like having a fabulous brunch with some charcuterie and you're having brie, maybe set some aside and, um, and use it as like a little topping. There's a nice little creative idea for you. Um, but anyways, going to Put this in our food processor, blender, Nutribullet, whatever you have at home, and get it nice and creamy. Welcome back to our usual domain over here. Um, as you can see, we are fresh from the Nutribullet. We have our ingredients is nice and blended up. Oh my God. Ugh, I'm living my worst nightmare. So actually, all we need to do was let our mixture cool down a little bit. According to Melissa, the Nutribullet sometimes creates a, a pressure cavity when it's when you have something hot in it. Um, and now you're going to need a sieve or like a strainer with really small holes if you don't know what a sieve is. And you need to pour your, our liquid mixture through it and allow it to strain so that you don't get the seeds. Um, if you don't have one, you can just be a little seedy. It's not the end of the world, but also I prefer to not have like seeds in my teeth at brunch personally, but you know, it's not the end of the world. And once we strain this, it's going. Once we strain it, we need it to cool down to like room temperature-ish because the next step is that we're going to um, add the heavy cream to it and we don't want the cream to break and curdle and like do gross <laughs> um, So we're gonna allow it to cool. So I think I'm gonna throw it in the freezer for a few minutes um, because I'm impatient. You could just like let it sit out a bit, but we're not doing that. Um, and then we're going to pour it into our little ice cube tray. So, ladies and gentlemen, now I can't open the damn heavy cream. Oh my god, what a nightmare. I'm living my worst nightmare. <laughs> um, we quite literally had it in the freezer for like two minutes, and it is cool enough to add our cream. So I'm going to add a cup of heavy cream. Oh my god. Oh, I only got one dribble out. I, I was seeing like bad visions. So we're gonna add a cup of heavy cream to our mixture. 
you can kind of see it's hard to see I don't want to tilt it too much and just spill it out onto the countertop but it's like a dark berry color at the moment so once we add our cream and stir it in so we're going to combine our mixture here and then oh wow does that look delicious it's starting to get nice and thick you know, we like it thick in Hot Girl Kitchen, okay? Unless you're Melissa and can't get thick. Sorry to this woman. Um, but this is a nice, thick consistency, as you can see. And we are going to go ahead and spoon it into our little ice cube tray. And then the remainder that doesn't fit into the, in the ice cube tray, um... I am just going to leave in this container and freeze it like as one large experience. We have a few of our um, cubes that we've gotten out of the um, ice cube tray. And they're like sort of melty as we've had them sitting here on the set lights under these, you know, bright lights for a few minutes. But like you're getting the point and that's all that matters um and all they're gonna do is like fizz and flavor it anyways like it's not like it's keeping its shape in the drink it's really difficult there we go Moral of the story is um, make the make this overnight and let it sit mm -hmm. so that um, in the freezer. So it's like ice cream. So it's actually frozen when your guests arrive. I mean, this is this is good for what we're doing, yeah. but um, like as you can see, it was kind of a mess to dole out. So that's the last thing you need to do is be embarrassed in front of your guests mm -hmm. on Sunday brunch. Are you ready? Go. Woo! Cheers. That was cute. So we did do our sherbet first. Um, in the, my world, I would have done the champagne and then sherbet. Um, but Melissa was really concerned about it, like overflowing. There we go. Could have been prevented if we just did it on top of the champagne. I think we still would have had to stir it to get this. This color. Yeah. yeah it but that's been... what we were looking for as far as the, oh, yeah. the top great. is concerned. Oh, I almost gave Melissa a drip of my champagne. That would have been terrible rationing on my part. Look at that. And then we also have... Um, some raspberries and strawberries for garnish. I'm thinking we go with the strawberry because I don't want to disturb these beautiful bubbles. Mm -hmm. Do you? Oh boy. I mean, I must say, these look quite divine. And I would like to point out to so our cute little mini moes, I would say we got about one out of like half, about half of our bottle. So this is a really cute idea if you're like doing like During a little party, like a little brunch part, something. your birthday, no birthday shower, <laughs> bridal shower, baby shower, maybe get a non-alcoholic one for the mother to be. Um, but like, you know, give everyone their little own personal portion. That's kind of a good way to do portion control too. Because if you have somebody that acts really dreadful when they drink too much, then now we limited them to two. Well, cheers to that. Mmm. I love the little foam at the top. Wow. I might take my strawberry out. Mmm. Oh, is that something? I should take mine out too. It's cute for decoration, but it really impedes the consumption. bomb. I love that. There's something about the texture of our sherbet 
with the fizziness of the champagne, it creates something so special. Like a float. Do you agree? It's like a float. It's really something special. I mean, I'm so into it. And it's not too sweet, which I know some people love a sweet vibe, right. but it's not really our vibe. They really wanted that. So more sugar, like I said. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, you could use different fruits. My mom just, when she did it, just did raspberries. Like we said earlier, ours is raspberry, blackberry, strawberry, and blueberry. Blueberry, yeah. I almost forgot about the blueberry. Um, I think it's great. Yeah. Your fave literally could never in a million years do this. She just uses Tropicana for yeah. her basic. Plain mimosa, mm -hmm. which actually I hate. Like, I don't hate a regular mimosa, but, like, I don't fresh. hate... We do fresh press orange juice in our mimosas. Like, I don't hate it, but I, I'm i at the point in my life where I know that there's so much more out there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, really, we're going to just have a plain mimosa? Like, look at what we could have instead, you know? And on that note, when all your guests are like, wow, this is fabulous, um, make sure you send them the link to this video. Make sure so they, they subscribe. subscribe. yep. And look, not everybody can enjoy this every day of their lives. I mean, I can't think of a better way to get ready for work than with a, a um, nice mimosa. A nice sherbet mimosa. Cheers. I'm sure your bosses would disagree, but not really my problem, is it? Cheers. Real high girl shit.